This week, we're reading about meth heads trying to survive the zombie apocalypse, the joy of art, some Stephen King short stories, and some poetry. Welcome to the reading vlog. Boom, show the tilt, boom. Bye. I love crackheads. So Megan Fox writing poetry that I can relate to. I was having literal hallucinations from my fever. So I've been thinking why zombie stories have always been so compelling to me. And I know I'm not the only one. I think part of it is like, it's literally an embodiment of like humankind's fear of death. Zombies are humans that come back to life and consume those that are living. And that's really compelling. So why is Fiend different from other zombie apocalypse stories? Well, I love crackheads. I was born in Las Vegas. I was raised in Las Vegas. I've spent a lot of time around drug addicts. So the idea of a zombie apocalypse story from the point of view of someone who's trying to get their last fix, who's trying to cut the like get out of the habit, who's trying to survive while they're bugging out is pretty compelling to me because I'm sick of seeing people who are totally prepared for the zombie apocalypse be my main protagonist. I'm, I'm ready to see some wigged out drug addict try to survive. But yeah, as I was saying before my toddler got into the dog poo, Fiend is about a meth head surviving the apocalypse, not crack, meth, common mistake. They're both uppers. I've never been high. I've been drunk, but I've never been high. I think it's important for me to say I have no prejudices against drug addicts. They are sick, they are mentally unwell, they need our help, and there's a reason why people turn to drugs to self-medicate their problems. That being said, I think part of acceptance is to acknowledge the people for what they are, and this book is about a meth head. And we all know, if you know meth heads, that they have a lot of common behaviors and common things that they do. And so far, about 40 pages in, the author is capturing those very well. Why am I holding a deck of golden playing cards? It's a workout I do. You assign a workout to each different suit and you do it. Today was a leg day. That's why I'm all sweaty. Irate, you protest loudly that you are a free spirit, but your spirit isn't free. It's an indentured servant to the entities that occupy you. You're imprisoned by all the demons you've bartered with, renting space in your body to them in exchange for a life that doesn't even make you happy. Why do you sacrifice me to feed the things that haunt you? The price of fame, one dead soulmate. That's a poem from Megan Fox's, yeah, Megan Fox, the movie star, her poetry collection, Pretty Boys Are Poisonous. I picked it up this Wednesday, and I'm not going to lie, I planned on laughing at it. I was not going to take it seriously. I did not think Megan Fox was going to write any poetry worth anything. And, not going to lie, I've read several good, decent poetry collections over the past year, and this isn't the worst. This is definitely middle of the pack. The girl is facing demons, and she writes about it. She, writes, she, she talks about self-harm, abuse, you know, self-hate. She has biblical and mytho mythological, like, illusions. It's pretty well-read stuff. Way better than I was anticipating for, like, a teen star celebrity that has nothing in common with everyday people. If you know me, I constantly say that celebrities and the very rich aren't, like, really people. They have so little in common with everyday individuals. Fame and wealth, where you don't have to worry about, like, the day like all the bad things about life, really just changes the whole human experience when you have those things. So Megan Fox writing poetry that I can relate to was not on the bucket list for 2024. On another note, we got a microphone. First time using this mic for the channel. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. I'm trying to get the sound quality figured out for April and this is the first clip. Friday, I'm gonna keep it short because I feel like crap. I have conjunctivitis in both eyes, a 102 fever, chills, fatigue, hopefully not COVID. We'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow. I finished Pretty Boys Are Poisonous, and I said yesterday, or two days, two days ago, that it's pretty good. It's not the worst poetry collection I've read recently. And that's not true. I think the first half had seven or eight good poems, and then the second half was lacking for nuance. There was one poem where she just says, I hate men, seven times. There's seven lines of I hate men, I hate men, I hate men. See, I have, I have it memorized already. She writes poetry like a teenager, or someone who just got through their first breakup. And for someone that's almost 40, it's a little, it's a little um, worrisome. I think she just needs therapy, but if, you know, publishing and getting this poetry collection out there made her feel better, I understand that. And she's rich enough that she does not have to worry about my opinion about her poetry collection. 
She's not she's not horrible when she's at her best, but she is an experienced, needs a lot more practice, but she's a celebrity. I don't imagine she'll be continuing on with the craft of poetry. I look forward to diving back into Fiend because I feel like crap. Meth addicts feel like crap. I think I'll be able to feel empathy for our characters. Sunday. Saturday was a complete wash, a total waste of time. I was having literal hallucinations from my fever, and today I'm feeling marginally better. It's only early afternoon, but I will not be reading a bit more because I'm having a few moments of lucid thought, and I'm going to go to sleep right after this and take care of my toddler who I've also gotten sick. I did finish Fiend by Peter Stenson, and that was an incredibly messy, controversial, dirty read. And I mean that in a very good way. Peter Stenson was able to take a story I've seen before, Zombie Apocalypse, and make it way more troubling way more controversial, and way more introspective. Because zombie apocalypses are incredibly high-stress situations that require a lot of quick thinking, a lot of resourcefulness. And no one is more resourceful than a drug addict. They will always find a way to get what they want. And this book was incredibly unpredictable because when you have one unpredictable, crazy character in a narrative, it can make for a lot of interesting plot twists. Now make every character in the narrative a drug addict, and that's a very unpredictable read. And I was surprised many times. I was on the edge of my seat. Ricola cocktail, medicine to Ricola. Tastes horrible, but it helps. But yeah, Peter Stenson, I'm definitely going to be giving him another try. So thank you to Ask the Viking for this book recommendation because it was something special. Definitely a zombie apocalypse story I have never seen before. The ending, like the story and the tone was very dismal. The ending was very much in light of a lot of the themes talked about throughout the book. Lots of little false plot lines you're following that turn out to be nothing. Very compelling read. I also read a short story by Stephen King, Strawberry Spring. A strawberry spring is just a false spring. It's winter, there's a few days of warm weather, it goes back to winter, that's a strawberry spring, a false spring. It's a short story about a serial killer on a college campus who's hunting people down, and in typical Stephen King fashion, he makes makes this a lot more compelling and interesting and horrifying. And that was okay. I do, I will say, I think it might be one of the least impressive Stephen King short stories I've read, but it's still not bad. Still not bad at all. 468 pages for this week, which isn't half bad because Saturday is usually one of my most productive days, and I completely had to waste it to recover. Next week will be better. I only was able to upload two videos this week. Next week, next week I'll be uploading at least four because I just couldn't talk. Thank you guys for watching this week's reading vlog, and I'll see you guys next time.